ever found yourself struggling to absorb information from a textbook, you're not alone. It's a challenge many of us face, given the dense and complex nature of textbook content. We're often left scratching our heads, trying to retain a sea of facts, figures and concepts that seem to evaporate from our minds as quickly as they entered. And it's not just about remembering. Understanding complex concepts can be like trying to untangle a ball of string. It's a painstaking process, and sometimes we're just left more tangled than when we started. Then there's the issue of focus. In a world brimming with distractions, staying on task and maintaining concentration can feel like an uphill battle. But what if there was a method to make textbook reading easier and more effective? A strategy that could help us navigate the labyrinth of information without getting lost? Enter the SQ3R method. The SQ3R method is a proven strategy to improve your textbook reading. It stands for Survey, Question, Read, Recite and Review. Let's take a quick glance at what each step entails. Survey is all about taking a broad view of the material. You're not reading in depth just yet, instead you're getting an overview of what you're about to dive into. Next is Question. This step involves generating questions based on the material you surveyed. It's all about curiosity and engagement. The read stage is pretty self-explanatory. This is when you delve into the material, actively seeking answers to your questions. Recite comes next. This is when you verbalize what you've learned, helping to cement the information in your mind. Finally, there's review. This is your chance to go back over the material, answering your questions and ensuring you've understood everything. Sounds simple, right? But each step is critical and we'll break them down one by one. The first step is survey. This is where you scan the chapter before you dive in. Imagine yourself as an explorer about to embark on a thrilling adventure through the dense jungle of knowledge. You wouldn't just rush in without first getting a lay of the land, would you? No, you'd survey the terrain, get a sense of what lies ahead, and then prepare yourself accordingly. This is exactly what we do when we survey a chapter in a textbook. So how do we go about this survey? Well, it's simpler than you might think. Look at the headings and subheadings. These are signposts that guide you through the forest of information, giving you a sense of the main topics and subtopics that you'll encounter along your journey. Next, pay attention to the introductions and summaries. These are like the prologue and epilogue of your adventure, providing you with a glimpse of what's to come and a recap of what's been covered. They're designed to give you a bird's eye view of the chapter, helping you grasp the overall narrative. And don't forget about the graphics, charts, diagrams, maps, and illustrations. These are your visual aids, your compass and guidebook. They can often provide insights and explanations that words alone may not fully convey. They're not just there to make the page look pretty, they're there to enhance your understanding. By doing this, you're not just passively flipping through the pages, you're actively engaging with the material, priming your mind for the details that will soon fill in the larger picture that you've just sketched out. This is your first interaction with the content, a preliminary handshake, if you will, before the deeper conversation begins. Remember, knowledge isn't just about absorbing information, it's about understanding, connecting and applying. And this process begins with a proper survey. When you survey, you're setting the stage for a successful reading session. Next up is question. Turn those headings and subheadings into questions. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, it's simple. The act of questioning serves to engage our minds actively in the material we're about to dive into. It gives us a purpose for reading, a mission to uncover the answers. It's like going on a treasure hunt, where the treasure is knowledge. Let's take an example. If a heading reads, the impact of climate change, you could frame a question like, what are the effects of climate change? This creates a sense of intrigue and curiosity, compelling us to read further. Similarly, a subheading like mitigation strategies could become what strategies are used to mitigate the effects of climate change. This not only sets a clear goal for your reading, but also helps in better comprehension and recall of the material. Remember, questioning isn't about doubting the material. It's about sparking curiosity. Now we reach the meat of the method, read and recite. Reading may seem like the most straightforward part of the SQ3R method, but it's not about passively skimming through pages. Instead, it's active reading, a hunt for answers to the questions we crafted in the previous step. Imagine yourself as a detective. Your mission is to decode the text, unravel its secrets. As you read, keep those questions front and center. 
They're your compass, guiding you through the dense forest of information. Every paragraph, every sentence is a potential clue. And when you find an answer, it's like striking gold. But don't stop there. Take a moment to reflect. Does this answer make sense? Does it fit with what you already know? If not, dig deeper. The text is a puzzle, and it's your job to solve it. Now let's move on to the recite part. You've read the text, found the answers, but how do you make sure they stick? You recite. Reciting is not merely repeating information like a parrot. It's about understanding, processing, and expressing the information in your own words. Imagine you're explaining the concept to a friend who knows nothing about it. How would you describe it? What examples would you use? This exercise forces you to grasp the essence of the information and translate it into language that makes sense to you. This is crucial for comprehension and retention. Reciting also reveals gaps in your understanding. If you struggle to explain a concept, it's a sign that you don't fully understand it. And that's okay. It's an opportunity to go back, read again, and fill in those gaps. Reading and reciting work together like a well-oiled machine. Reading provides the raw material, the information. Reciting processes that information, transforming it into knowledge that you can use. So pick up that textbook, craft those questions, read with a purpose, and recite with understanding. Remember, this isn't a race. Take your time. The goal is not to finish the chapter, but to understand it. Reading and reciting are where the magic happens. This is where you truly learn. Finally, we have review. This is your insurance policy against forgetting. It's like the cherry on top of the cake, the final touch that seals in all the knowledge you've gathered. But why is review so crucial? Well, it's simple. The human brain is a complex organ and it needs repetition to reinforce learning. Imagine your brain is like a busy city. Without regularly revisiting the information, the pathways to that knowledge can become like abandoned side streets, overgrown and hard to navigate. Reviewing the material is like the city council sending out a crew to clear those streets, making them easily accessible again. So, you revisit the material, answer the questions again, and solidify the knowledge in your memory. You're ensuring that the information doesn't just stay in your short-term memory, but finds a permanent home in your long-term memory. With review, you're not just learning for now, you're learning for the long haul. So that's the SQ3R method in a nutshell. Let's take a moment to recap the five steps of this powerful approach to textbook reading. The first step, the survey, sets the stage for what's to come. It involves a quick overview of the chapter or section you're about to dive into. You're not reading in detail yet. Instead, you're scoping out the terrain, identifying key headings, subheadings, and any highlighted or boxed text. This initial sweep allows you to predict the content, structure, and organization of the material. Then comes the second step, question. This is where you transform those headings and subheadings into questions. Curiosity is a powerful motivator. By generating questions before you start reading, you're giving your brain a reason to seek out answers. This simple trick can significantly boost your engagement with the text. The third step is read. Now that you've primed your brain with questions, it's time to find the answers. You're reading with a purpose. You're hunting for information that will answer the questions you've posed. It's an active process, one that keeps your mind engaged and focused. Next, we have the recite stage. After each section, take a moment to recite the answers to your questions. This isn't about rote memorization, it's about understanding. By putting what you've read into your own words, you're reinforcing your comprehension of the material. Finally, there's the review stage. This is your opportunity to consolidate your understanding. Go back over the material, check your recitations against the text, and ensure that you've truly grasped the content. And there you have it, the SQ3R method. It's a systematic, purposeful approach to textbook reading that promotes comprehension and retention. Each step is important. Each one plays a role in ensuring that you don't just read the words on the page, but truly understand them. Remember, textbook reading doesn't have to be a struggle. With the SQ3R method, you've got a strategy for success.